Hey there, so a couple things that I wanted to post out in a video so that it can help people make Seesaw a little bit easier for themselves during this digital learning time. Um, one thing I'm gonna post out is activities, um, some things that you can know about those. The other one is gonna be about using folders, which are available to the teachers, so that you can kind of keep things a little more organized. Now, first things first, to make a folder, what you'll need to do is you click on the side here, if you saw that little blue folder, I'll show it again. I just looked at my class journal and I clicked on my folder here. It's blue right now. And it's gonna pop up with some options. So in this one, I have my media class, the art class, the music class. I put one in for reading, I put one in for math. But if I wanna add another, I can go ahead and add another folder. So for example, let's say I have a math support teacher who's gonna be posting some things out. They're gonna be a purple for it. I'm gonna make a folder that says math support. That way it's easy for me to find things in that folder. I can add another one if I want that says social posts so that I can have anything where a student is posting something just about fun social stuff put in one spot. And I can add as many as I want. Now, <clears throat> once I have my folders made, I can go ahead and exit out of that, and I can go ahead and start adding things to them. One of the best ways to add stuff is to post things as activities. So if I make an activity, I can post out an assignment to students where they can actually go and watch or do the assignment right in here. And the nice part is, is I can have them already set and assigned to go into certain folders. So if I want to make an activity as a teacher, I can go ahead and hit this add button. Now, if I click on this add button, there are three post choices that I get. One is I can post student work. And this is great if I want to post a quick note to all my students. So if I wanted to do this, for example, I could say, hello, everyone. I hope you had a great night's sleep. I'm spelling things wrong right now. Night of sleep. <laughs> Too much online learning today. And I hope, am so excited to see you online today. Okay. Now, when I do post something like this, I can go ahead and again, you guys know how to do a record, but I can hit that check mark. I'm going to have mine post to everybody in the class as an announcement. I'm going to hit that check mark again. And now I can go ahead and I can choose a folder. So if I do that social post, let's say this one's just about social stuff, I can select it, and it's going to post into that folder. Okay, now, if I'm doing an activity, I can go down, again, hit that plus sign, click on the assign activity, and I have access to a whole bunch of activities. This is one where we love to share as teachers. So any activities I've made or I've saved are in my library anything that's been saved to my school. So if I'm working with three other first grade teachers, we might post an activity into our school library and we can all use it together. Or I can go into community. Now this is my favorite feature of the activity library. Once I'm in here, I can go ahead and choose my grade. So again, I'm saying I'm second grade right now. And I wanna just look for only something to do with math. And now I can go ahead and see all of these online activities that other people have made. Really popular ones have more likes, they're up at the top, the things that have been on for less time might be closer or further down the bottom, but there are tons and tons and tons of things. I can always search for a certain type of activity too, but let's go ahead and just say, I'm going to do this one. If I click on it, it gives the instructions for the students, it has instructions they can listen to, and it has some information that they can follow. So again, it's telling me that their assignment will be to write the fractions below each picture, then record myself reading each fraction correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit assign, and I can choose, again, as an art teacher, I have tons and tons and tons of people in here, um, a folder, it's gonna have all my students saying that I can send it out to them. So if I am just sending this to one student, I can unclick this. Let's say I only need Diani to do hers. 
and then I would click folders. And again, if I'm the math support person, I just select math support and I hit my check mark. Now, I can either schedule this to go out to the classes at a certain time. Like if I don't want this to go out until tomorrow, I can change this to be tomorrow's date. Or I can change it to any date that I want. So if you want to schedule out assignments from now until the end of the month, you can. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and keep with today. I'm going to post it right now because I want to use it. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit my assigned to one class. Now, once I posted my assignment, what's really nice is I can go back to my class. And again, you can see it's right here on my screen. Now, I'm going to pretend that I'm doing this on my iPad quick so I can have an assignment posted. And, oops, I posted it to the wrong kid for my activity. Let me quick change this. If I want to change it, I can click on those three dots and I can hit edit. And I can go ahead and choose like, I screwed up and sent this to the wrong kid for my example. So I need to send it to Andy Warhol too. So I'm going to hit save and I post that. Now, Andy's going to get this to pop up on his screen. So he's going to add a response quick. And I'm just going to do this as an example. So it's going to be fast. And I'm going to say to So once Andy makes his response, who I'm signed in as on my iPad, it's going to pop up in here. I'm going to get an alert saying that it's ready. So it says right now on his that he's waiting for approval. And just so that I can have this ready, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reload that page. Now again, you'll see that up here it says I have one response that's pending approval. I'm not going to look at it yet because I'm going to tell you some really cool things. If you have assignments and activities posted, just so you know, if you schedule something, you can see things here that are going to get pushed out soon. And I can always close an activity and let kids no longer post to it by clicking on archive or archiving it and then seeing it in here. To archive something, all I do is click on those three dots. And as long as there's been one post, I should say, it will let me, oopsies, <laughs> it's going to let me archive it. If there are no posts, I can only delete it. So this has one so I can archive this activity if I want it. Now if I click on the activity, you're going to see, I can see exactly who's responded and a really brief snippet of what they've responded to already. So I'm going to exit out of that quick and I'm going to look back in here. Now, if I'm a teacher logging into my class for the first time that day or the first time in a while, okay, I am going to see that there might be a notification that pops up. And it says I have all, all of these unapproved posts that I need to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that unapproved post. Now the other way I might see that is it's going to be right in my journal and I can click on the bottom. Now first things first is I can see that one that Andy just did and that I filled in here is going to be on the first line because that's the most recent. I could keep scrolling through and seeing other things that have been posted from him as well. But what's really great is I have these folders. I've already said where I want these things to go. So if I'm only the math support teacher, I don't need to look through all of this. What I can do is I can go over here where it says unapproved items. I can click on that folder and I'm the math support teacher. I want to see that. And here is my only response then that I need to look at. Where this is becoming useful is in classes where, like in some of my classes, today I had one class that had 250 posts that were put in that day. I can't look through all of them, and the three other teachers who are assigned to that class can't spend all of our day looking at every single post to find what we need. This way, I can find just what I need really fast. And if I look at it quick, I can say, okay, I can listen to the response there. And if I'm happy, I can hit approve. Now it doesn't touch the other things for the other teachers. This only is going to affect mine. And once it says everything's been approved, now everything's been approved. Again, this is just a great way for me to be finding what I need quickly without having to spend a whole bunch of time 
scrolling through the endless feed of our journal. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to contact me really quick. I'm going to write up my email on here so you can see it. My email is etreblehorn at northfieldschools.org. I'm more than happy to help you folks out in figuring out what you can do on Seesaw. Um, again, if you need any specific ideas, don't hesitate to ask. I'm posting a lot of videos for my school. I'm happy to post some for you as well. Thanks and have a great night.